some nice translations. I made a small introduction to this first. The gopis are saying, we're not alone. If there's, if any woman, if any woman hears the song of your flute, then they, like us, will deviate from their cultured proper behavior. Veno Gita Ari Charita Chale. Chale means, oh yeah, <laughs> Chale, there it goes. Chala Chala means, I mean, it's translated, Chale is translated, it does not, it says not Chale, who will not deviate. In other words, Chale Tri Lokam, Chala means like Chala Chala. If someone hears your flute anywhere in the three worlds, they'll forget everything but your flute and, and the person who's playing it. That's your flute. And you're so beautiful that it makes us and all the birds and animals and even trees of bread go mad in ecstasy. So as our standard, we usually hear from the... Uh, so Jiva Goswami Pad, he gives a very rustic explanation of this verse number 40 from chapter 29. Sri Krishna said that if you stay with me because you're bewitched in Samohita, Samohitarya, by my flute, then you will be mocked and ridiculed by those ladies who are faithful to their husbands. So replying to that, and tis, that's why the gopis are speaking this verse, because it's not written... But Jiva Goswami is saying, oh, we're not, we're not hearing Krishna's response to verse 39 that the Gopi spoke. Dehi Dasyam. Dehi Dasyam, they said, Bhavama Dasya, we'll become your Dasis. So this is verse 40. So between 39 and 40 of the Gopi speaking, Krishna interjected and said, oh, you will be mocked by all the chaste ladies, all the Arundhati, Arundhati and Shachi and and all the chaste devis of the universe, they are loyal to their husbands. And in anger, the gopis become angry and they reply in verse number 40. So verse number 40, which we're discussing right now, is spoken in anger. Listen, oh Anga, what woman in all the three worlds wouldn't be, wouldn't abandon all the religious activities by once she's bewildered by hearing your flute, you're citing all these ladies, Arundhati and Sachi, etc., that are so chaste and loyal to their husbands. Why are they so? Because they have not heard your Yatavena Gita. <laughs> they have not Kala, Kala Palayata Veno Gita. They have not heard the artistic, playful sound of your Murli. But if when they do, and if they do, they will be just like us, Samahita Arya Charita. Samahita Arya Charita. Very beautiful Sanskrit. Samahita Arya Charita. Samahita Arya Charita. All their behavior and good be. Oh, she's very well behaved. She's very refined and cultured and well behaved and moral, and religious and dharmic. Not now. <laughs> Samohita. Ah, wow. Kahan Krishna, Kahan Sham, Kahan Krishna, Kahan Sham, Kahan Vrindavan. What woman in the three worlds would not deviate from the proper path by the sound of your flute? All would deviate, says Jiva Goswami Bhattacharya. I think gopis are saying. So now he says, while explaining the meaning of the word Sammohita, like Mohini Murti, complete bewilderment. Sri Jiva Goswami supports and sympathizes with the Braja Gopis and their natural attraction to Krishna's beauty. To show his support and sympathy with the Braja Gopis, well, that makes sense, because he is one. Sri Jiva Goswami in his Siddhas Rupa is a Braja Gopi. He has a spiritual form and Nitya Vrindavan as Vilas Mandri. So he's he's throwing in he, he's throwing in some support. He's throwing in support behind the gopis. It's kind of an alliance. It's kind of the Sopaksha, the party teaming up together to gang up on Krishna to fight him back. So he's supporting and sympathizing with the Braja Gopis and their natural attraction to Krishna's beauty. And to do that in his tika, Sri Jiva Goswami cites another Bhagavatam verse reference to prove how not only the coward girls 
But even the devis and most powerful devas like Brahma, Shiva, also become Samohita. So the gopis are saying, they're saying, what woman in the universe? Because we're women and we're Samohita. But what woman in the universe who heard your flute wouldn't become Samohita? And then Vilas Mandri says, yes, Sakis, not only that, you, what about, Venu, you forgot what we were speaking in the Venu Geet. This is Pranaya Geet. This is Pranaya Geet in chapter 30, but nine chap, ten chapters previously, in chapter 21, we also speak, spoke the Venu Geet. And so there, he quotes this verse, when the devatas and their wives are flying in their flower airplanes and catch sight of Krishna, whose nature and form bring joy to all. And when they hear the pure song that Krishna plays on his flute, their hearts are shaken by Cupid. And they become so bewildered that the flowers fall out of their hair and their belts loosen. Nibibandha. Their Nibibandha becomes undone. The knot of their undergarments. It says <laughs> The translation is very... Uh, uh, family-oriented. The flowers fall out of their hair and their belts loosen. It's actually the knots of the rope strings holding up their undergarments, which is Nivi Bandha. They become undone. So in Vishnu Chakravarti's Tika on Veno Geet, chapter 21, verse 12, he's saying that the husband, the devatas are flying with their devis and their pushpamiman and they're noticing, oh, our wives are becoming so disturbed, they're perspiring, their, their flowers are falling out of their hair, they're trembling, it's, they're, they're all clothes, or cholis becoming wet with perspiration, they're sighing and looking over the, you know, hearing the sound of Krishna's ankle bells and the beautiful music of the Raslila, they're becoming so immensely attracted. And the husbands are uh, noticing this and they're astounded and amazed then they start to feel themselves, wait a minute, I'm also becoming attracted. I'm also perspiring. My chest is covered with pasima and perspiration. And I'm trembling also. And, 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 my, and I'm feeling faint. And what is this? I'm a, I'm a devata. I'm a man. And this is some other man. How, how is his flute playing? How is the ankle bells jingling on his dancing feet in the Ras Mandala? How is it affecting me? Shiva, Brahma, Indra, etc. So this he's saying that this is the power of Krishna's attraction, Samohita, that it attracts and bewilders everyone and every living entity. It's talking about jivas, not about genders. We're talking about jivas, not genders. So the jiva is male or female. I mean, excuse me, the gender is male or female. There's polarity of opposites. But in the jiva, the jivas are all Krishna's servants. So this is an amazing thing he's explaining. Then he quotes another verse, uh, 10, 35, 15. So he's quoting all kinds of Gitas here. First, the Gopis are speaking Pranaya Git, and they're mentioning Veno Git. So that, that's like a red light goes off. Ding, Veno Git. So then Jiva Goswami goes back to the Veno Git in chapter 21 and quotes the verse 12, which we just cited, that the Devatas and their wives... Now, because he said he's supporting them and sympathizing with the Braja Gopis by supplying these verses. So now, speed up the clock a little bit and go ahead of the game to chapter 35, which is called Yugo Gita. Yugo Gita is, is called Yugo because there's pairs of verses spoken together. Groups of Gopis are standing here and there in the Braj Mandal, in Braja Gokul. Krishna has gone off to the forest for the Purvan Leela. In the early morning, between 8.36 and 10.48, Krishna takes all the cows and all the boys, and they go out, and the gopis just uh, follow him. Then they collapse in swoon of ecstasy and separation, and their uh, sevadasis and, and lovely uh, lady friends drag their bodies back into their houses, and somehow they recover, and they collect in groups here and there, different, the sapaksha and vipaksha, Different gopis, they meet together here and there at the water well or in the goshala or in the marketplace or in the forest or anywhere. 
and they start speaking verses. One gopi will say, oh, Saki, you know, Krishna's, Krishna's flute is like this and like that. Oh, Saki, but no, Krishna's flute is like this and like that. So one gopi speaks and another gopi speaks. And that's called yugo. It means a pair of verses. So in this, it's called yugo Gita. So now he quotes Yugo Gita to say, not only women of all the universe, hey, listen, girls, listen, Sakis, you're, you're trying to explain to Krishna, you're not the only women that are attracted to him. You're not the only women that become bewildered by his flute. Any woman and all women in the universe, even Davies and Devatas, they will become bewildered. So now later in Veno Gita, excuse me, later in Yugo Gita, Chapter 35, verse 15, Jiva Goswami supplies this verse. When Saki said, hey Saki, when Sham presses his bimba red lips to his flute and sends forth the tones of harmonic scale in variegated melodies, Brahma, Shiva, Indra, and the other chief devatas become confused upon hearing that sound and they become samohitarya. Samohitarya. Veno Gita. Kala Veno Gita. Samohitarya. So, Jiva Goswami says, listen girls, it's not only we girls are getting attracted and bewildered and all their ladies of the universe, but even the primal lords and devatas controlling this universe. Brahma, Shiva, Indra. And other chief devatas, that means there's, why do they say mukya devatas, the chief devatas? Because there's 33 crores of devatas, but there's 33 mukya devatas, the main ones, like Indra and Brahma and uh, Chandra and Varuna, there's all these, uh, Kubera, different, all oh, there's 33, and then they have, each one has a million expansions, so it becomes 33 million. It's it's not surprising. If you go to India, to New Delhi, to the North Block, then there's someone called the Home Minister of India. He's a very big, important person. So if you go to meet him, he has 15 secretaries, 15 PS, 15 different secretaries. Each one is controlling a different aspect of his portfolio. Because we went to meet one, the Home Minister once. So we had to go through so many different secretaries. So what to speak? A little small person of this world has 15 expansions and assistants and helpers. What to speak about the 33 primal chief demigods having one million assistants? This universe is a lot bigger than India. (laughs) India, you need 15. To manage the universe, you need a, a million. It's a big place. (laughs) 